When we look at the anterior view, the stomach has a nice J shape to it. What I mean by that is there is a lesser curvature here. There is a greater curvature here. And again, you can sort of see that J shape. If we spin it around and look at the posterior view, similar, but what you'll see here is just the opposite, right? It's a backwards J. What you can also see on this posterior view is this outside layer. So if you'll notice, this model is layered. You can see sort of this muscly tissue here. And then there's this outside layer that we call the serosa, which covers it all. When we look at the muscle tissue itself, there are actually three layers of muscle here. There's a longitudinal layer that runs the long axis of the organ. There is a circular layer that runs the circular pattern of the organ. And on this model, they do a really nice job of cutting out and going deep for one more layer. That's the oblique layer. Remember, oblique means neither parallel nor perpendicular. So from superficial to deep, we have longitudinal, we have circular, and we have oblique, meaning on an angle. Other than the muscle and this outside serosa, Another thing you'll see here are these yellow sort of spider web pattern lines. And this is actually part of cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve. So if you recall, the vagus nerve is that long wandering nerve, starts at our brainstem and wanders all the way down to our digestive system. So from an anterior view like this, remember, this would be the left side. This is the right side. So what we have here is the left branch of the vagus nerve coming to the anterior side. If I spin this around on the posterior, you will see the right branch of the vagus nerve coming down and feeding the, the posterior side. If I open this model up, What we have here are a few different regions that are more easy to see. So of course, coming down, when you chew and swallow, food comes down your esophagus. This is the bottom of the, or the lower end of the esophagus right here. From there, we get to the cardia. This is the cardia, this region right here. Then we have this bump, this sort of dome-shaped structure on top. We call this the fundus. This region is the body. And this is the pylorus. So the cardia is here. The fundus is here. The main body and pylorus. And what you see on the inside are these gastric folds. We call them rugae. So your stomach is a distensible organ. What I mean by that is it has the ability to expand or stretch. So when your stomach is empty, these rugae appear. But when you fill up your stomach, it spreads out, right? Your stomach distends. Think of eating a big meal or drinking a lot of water all at once. Your stomach distends, and these rugae start to disappear. Of course, when you empty your stomach, they're going to show up again. Fundus, body, pylorus. Cardia is up here. Of course, this is the esophagus, and you see the rugae on the inside. One last structure I want to show you is this right here. This is called the pyloric sphincter. So remember, it might be easier if I show you this one. If I take this off, this is just a mirror image of what you're seeing right here. But this right here, that is the pyloric sphincter. Remember, fundus, body, pylorus, pyloric sphincter. That sphincter, remember sphincter is a muscle that can open and close on itself. That sphincter is what regulates and allows food to pass from the stomach into the first part of the small intestine, which is what I'm pointing at right here. But that sphincter right there is what we call the pyloric sphincter. It's a muscle.